Okay, so you are welcome back to this live session. So the other time we were talking about matrices, and we've talked about addition and subtraction of matrices. So this time now, we want to do with multiplication. So I've already explained how multiplication works as well. I've already instructed us on how to carry out multiplication. So now, I said we are, there are times we will ask questions like, okay, if the matrix A is given to be this, then compute something like this plus one. Now, I also told us that time, I said one, whenever it appears like this, when you are dealing with matrices, when it's not appearing as something, as an entry, that is an element inside the matrix, when it's appearing single, that is, you want it, 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 it to be added to other matrices, then that one is just not, it's not just ordinary one. That one is known as the identity matrix. Now, for this kind of matrix now, then the kind of one that you can add, now, the kind of one you can add to it is the 3 by 3 identity matrix. And how does it look like? It's 100, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's 3 by 3 identity For 2 by 2 identity matrix, this is for 3 by 3, this will be 1, 0, 0, 1. So that's how that looks like. So let's compute this now. What is A squared? A squared is simply A times A. So all we have to do now is what? Multiply A with A. So let's do A times A. A times A. Now this will be 1, 4, 1, 2, 6, 0, 5, 1, 2. Multiply by the same 1, 4, 1, 2, 6, 0, 5, 1, 2. Now, by you, a lot of you would want to say, okay, since it is A squared, let me just square all the terms that are here. No, don't do that. You don't square all the terms that are here. A squared means A times A. So you have to carry out the multiplication as I've um, taught you earlier. So in this situation now, let us see maybe this satisfies the condition to multiply matrices. You know, the condition is that the number of colons of the first one must be equal to the number of rows of the second one. So for this one now, let's see how many how many colons we have here. We have one, two, three. We have three colons. Let's see the number of rows that we have here. One, two, three. So since we have three colons here and three rows here, then which means that this is right that it can be multiplied. And let's see the results. What we have. This, this is a 3 by 3 matrix. This is only a 3 by 3 matrix. So at the end of the day, when the, three, the two threes in between goes, we'll have a 3 by 3 matrix at the end of the day. So let's see. Let's see how the multiplication goes. So we'll go still the same way. Row 1. So this, this position here is row 1, colon 1, which implies that I'll be picking row 1 from here and I'll be picking colon 1 from here. And the position also marks as the first thing here, we'll make the first entry here. The second entry here to the second entry here, the third entry here to the third entry here. So now I see that one times one is one. Four times two is eight plus eight plus then one times five is five. So row one colon one is set to I can choose to move downward and I can choose to move um to the right. So let me move downward this time around. Now if I go to the downward part, is that like I'm moving from an horizontal link to another horizontal link, which implies that I've jumped from row 1 to row 2 like that. I told you horizontals for row and columns for verticals. So I've, I've gone to the second row now, but I'm still, I'm still in the first column because it is still the same vertical as I'm still with. So this is like row 2, column 1. And since it is row 2, column 1, this implies that I'm picking elements from the second row here. And I'm picking what? I'm picking from column 1 here. So that's just it. So let's see how this goes. This is 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 6 times 2, that's 12, plus 0 times 5, that's 0. See, I can just move to anywhere, like, just with the rule. If I want to move to this place now, you know, this is like row 1, column 3. It's still on the same vertical with this one, so it's row 1, and column 3. Because I already told you that we're going to get the 3 by 3 matrix. So, if I skip this middle one here, then I'll get to row, row, three, row 1, column 3. So we already know that it's a 3 by 3 matrix. I've explained how that comes about the other time. So, but let me not uh, do it unfortunately. Let me do it orderly. So let me let me proceed to the next row like that. So this is row 1, this is row 2, this is row 3 now, but still the same column. So I'm having what? Row 3, column 1. So row, this is row 3 and this is still column 1. So I'll have 5 times 1, which is what? 5. Plus 1 times 2, that's 2. Plus... 2 times 5, that's what? 
That's there. So this colon is set to like that. So I move to the next stage. Now to the next stage. Now this is still row one, column two. Now so I will have row one, column two. So one times four. That's four. Plus four times six. That's twenty-four. Plus one times one. That's one. That's set with. I can move. I can still go. But let me let me do it vertically as I've been doing it. So this is still no. Here now is one two second row. One, two, second column, row two, column two. So I'm picking this and I'm picking this. So two times four is eight. Plus six times six is thirty-six. Then zero times one is zero. Let's proceed. Now to the last part here, we have what? This is row three, then column two. This is five, one, two. Multiply by four, six, one. So first to four, second to second, third to the third. So we have five times four. That's what? 20 plus 1 times 6. That's 6. Then plus 2 times 1. That's what? That's 2. Then the next one now. We we'll move to the other column. So we we'll have something like row 1 here. Now this is still row 1, but this is now column 3. So we are dealing with this column here, but we are dealing with these rows one by one. So 1, 4, 1 to 1, 0, 2. So 1 times 1 is 1, 4 times 0, that's 0, plus 1 times 2, that's what? That's 2. So next one is 2, so row 2 now, column 3. Yes, this is row 2, column 3. So this is 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 6 times 0 is 0, plus 0 times 0, that's 0 as well. So the next one is row 3, column 3. So 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 times 0 is 0, plus 2 times 2 is 4. And 5, we see if I just join us, this is Science Unite Africa Initiative. We are taking a revision class for the people that have mathematics tomorrow in their life. So if you have your classmates or your friends that also want to write YEC, or you know anybody, your brother, your sister that wants to write YEC, so you can also send this invite link to them. Um, to join, and if you have any questions they would like me to solve, then through the, via this WhatsApp number, you can send it, then I will attend to those questions. So let's proceed with what we have here. So, by the time I sum everything here, 1 plus 8 plus 5, what will that be? That's 14. That's 14. 4 plus 24 plus 1, that will be 28 plus 1, that's 29. Next one is 1 plus 0 plus 2, that's 3. 2 plus 12 plus, this is 0, this is 0, so 2 plus 12 plus 0, that is 14, 14, 8 plus 36 plus 0, that's 44, that's 44, then 2 plus 0 plus 0, that's 2, this one is 5 plus 2 plus 10, this is 7 plus 10, that's 17, that's 17, and this is 20 plus 6 plus 2, that's 28, that's 28. Then 5 plus 0 plus 4, that's 9. Right. So we have been able to get a square like that. So that permit us to write a square here. Yeah? So a square is, which is a times a. We remind that I said you don't square the component inside this place. A square is done by multiplying a with a, a with itself. So this is 14. 29, 3, 14, 44, 2, 17, 28, 9. Now, again, listen, in case there's anything that is not clear to you with what I'm doing now, you can drop it in the comment section, then I will be able to attend to you. So if anything is not clear, I'll drop it in the comment section. So I'll, I'll clear this part now. You can screenshot this screen before. So now that I've gotten a square, the next thing I need to get is 2a. 2a, I already told you what you do when you sum that, you just multiply everything inside this place by 2. So this is going to be 2, 8, 2, 4, 12, 0, 10, 2, 4. So that's 2a. And our height, this is our height. 
that we're going to be using. So at the end of the day, a squared minus 2a plus 1 will now be 14, 29, 3, 14, 44, 2, 17, 28, 9, then minus 2a. So that will be minus 2, 8, 2, 4, 12, 0, 10, 2, 4, then plus 100010001. So let us compute this and see what we are going to get. Now, for the first, you can do it one, by, one after the other, or you can do it at the same time. For the first one here, which is row 1 colon 1, I will have 14 minus 2 plus 1. 14 minus 2, that's 12. 12 plus 1, that's 13. That's 13. For the next one, I have 29 minus 8, that's 21. So 21 plus 0, that's 21. 3 minus 2, that's 1. 1 plus 0 is still 1. So that one is settled. 14 minus 4 is 10. 10 plus 0 is still 10. 44 minus 12. What is 44 minus 12? That should be 32. 32. So 32 plus 1, that's 33. 2 minus 0. Plus 0, that's still 2. 17 minus 10, that's 7. And 7 plus 0 is still 7. Next one is 28 minus 2, that's 26. 28 minus 2 is 26. So 26 plus 0 is still 26. And finally, we have 9 minus 4, 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. So we have computed this and this, this everything I will have here, this is it. So this is another way you can be asked question in uh, on a matrix. So I will not say more about matrices for now. Like this is just a brush up on matrices. So like I said, if you have any question that is that is your problem, you can send it to, to this WhatsApp number, then I will treat that question particularly. So um, the person has sent in that. We should treat matrices also said that I should, I should talk about differentiation as well. So let me quickly say something about differentiation. Now Now, so let's talk about differentiation now. Now, there's something we call first principle, but I'm not talk about first principle now. It's when you are doing it further math that like you talk about first principle. So here, let's see how differentiation goes. If you have a function, if y equals ax raised to the power n, of course, y is f of x, a function of x, then what's the differentiation? Y dx, y, y, y dx, which is all the same thing as y uh, f prime of x or y prime. So you can be written in any of these forms. It means the same thing. So the y dx is just going to be what, what do you do? You use this power to multiply the coefficient of x as the first thing you do. So that will be n a x raised to the power. Now, in the, the second thing you do is you subtract one from the power. Example, what I'm saying is that. If you have something like 2x raised to the power 4, then if you want to differentiate this 2x raised to the power 4, you have 4 times 2, that's 8x raised to the power 4 minus 1, which is what? 8x raised to the power 3. So that's how we start. That's, that's the general rule for differentiation. Now, there are a lot of things that we consider in differentiation. Don't forget this is a revision class, so I'm not going into details as much as that. But if you have questions on any topic I'll be talking about here, just send me questions via this WhatsApp link. And if you're just joining us or you have been with us from the beginning of this live session, tell your classmates, tell your friends to join this live session as well. So and also there will be live session for other subjects as well: chemistry, science subjects, chemistry, biology. Um, further math, physics, and so on like that. So, always tune in. Now, 
I've shown you how the first session looks like. Now, let's go into some things that we need to deal with under the first session. Now, under the first there's something we call composite rule or over change rule. Composite rule or over change rule. What does composite do? What does it deal with? It deals with the fact that, okay, if you have a function, if y is a function, y equals f of g of x. And this y is a function. But the function itself has another function inside it. Then that's a composite function. Let me give you an example of the composite function. You know, having the square of a, of a variable is a, it can define a function. That is, a function can be f of x equals x squared. Another function also can be f of x equals x plus 3. This is another function. Now, but it can have a new function. Let's say f this is f1, f2. Now, let's say f3 of x. Now, a new function entirely is now x plus 3 raised to power 2. Now, as you can see, this function, now, it's combining these two things together. Yes, there's, a, there's an x plus 3, but there's a power of 2 as well. This is a composite function. It's composed of a function inside another function. So, whenever we have cases like this, what do we do? This is where what we call change rule come in. Change rule. So change rule says that, okay, all you have to do is what? Let u equals g of x. And once you do that, find your du dx, which is what? g prime of x. And differentiate the function to the one that is inside. Let it be u of x. Now, which implies that once that one is u, why we not we no longer have f of g of x again? We have the f of what? f of u. And since it is now f of u, and you can now say that you can differentiate what y with respect to what with respect to u. You know, u is a function of x, but then the variable that is visible here for us to differentiate y with respect to is u. So this would be so we can only find the y the u now. The y the u will then be f prime of what f prime of u. So change rule says that the at the end of the day, the y the x which is what we are looking for will be equal to the y the u multiplied by u the x. This is change rule. As you can see, this is the you can cancel this rule out and you still have the y the x. So that's just uh, one way you can see it. So, and what's that? That's g prime of x multiplied by what? f prime of u. So if you look at this thing very well, this is g prime of x multiplied by f prime. What's u? u itself is g of x. So this is what change rule is talking about. So this is change rule. I'll leave it to quickly screenshot that. Now, let's see example. Let's see how we can apply change to solve the question. If you have a question, what to differentiate? Let's see how we can apply it. So, I'm doing this now. So, we have, let's say we have a function y equals 2 in the bracket x squared minus 1 raised to power 3. Now, if you have, a, you have a function like this, this is a function of function. And what's the innermost function? The innermost function here is x squared minus 1. It's one inside, like inside a bracket or something like that. So, we just say let u equals x squared minus 1. Then we will now find the u, the x. So, applying our rule, 2 will come down to multiply x, that will be equal to what? 2x, that will subtract 1, so 2x to the power 1. Now, this is minus 1. Whenever you differentiate a constant, you will get 0. So, if you differentiate a constant, you get 0. So, the dimension of this is just purely 2x and nothing more. So, why now will be what? 2, instead of writing x squared minus 1, we have 2u raised to power 3. Then, this implies that the y, the u, equals, so 3 will multiply 2, so we have 6u, then you subtract 1 from 3, that's what, 6u raised to the power 2. So, you can rewrite this, since we know what u is, u is x squared minus 1, so we have 6 into x squared So, we we'll replace u with what it is originally, x squared minus 1 raised to the power 2. So, at the end of the day, dy dx Using change rule is dy 
the u dot the u dx. So which is what? What's the y du? That's 6 x squared minus 1 squared multiplied by 2x. So at the end of the day, we have 12x x squared minus 1 squared. And that's that. That's that result. Very, very simple. That's what composite rule is about. So that's that about composite rule. You can apply it to as many questions as you are given. But if you have a question, a particular question on differentiation that you want me to solve, I've already said that, send it via this WhatsApp link. I'll solve it for you. But I won't be able to solve more than that on composite rule. So I'm moving to the next thing. So I I'll proceed. The next thing I want to talk about is product rule. Product rule. Product rule says that if y is a, is a product of function, and this is two functions being multiplied together, then it means that, so you say, let, first of all, say let u equals f of x, and uh, v equals g of x. The next thing we do is that we'll find our du dx, usual f prime of x, then we'll find our dv dx as well, that's g prime of x. Then the rule, the product rule itself is that dy dx equals u dv dx plus v du dx. So that's what the, that, this is product rule, this is product rule. So if you want to write it in this form, that would be simply what's u f of x multiplied by g prime of x plus g of x multiplied by f prime of x. So that's what that is. Now let's take it, let's, let's take an example now. Let's take an example. Apply this rule. So let's say we have a question that says y equals 3x squared multiplied by um, 2x squared 2x raised to power 3 plus 5x. So if we have something like this now, now this is a product. Product of two functions. If you want to differentiate these two now, let's see how we go about it. Now, this 3x squared can be on its own. This one also can be on its own. So we just label them say, let u equals 3x squared. That implies that the u dx equals what? 2 multiply 3, we subtract 1 from 2, that's 6x. Then v will be equal to 2x raised to the power 3 plus 5x. We find the v dx, which is what? 6x squared. 3 times 2, 6. Then you subtract 1 from what? From 3 plus 5. So applying this now, applying this formula now, applying this rule, we have the y dx will then be equal to what's u? u is 3x squared, so that's 3x squared multiplied by dv dx, x squared plus 5, then plus u dv dx, so uh, v dv dx now, what's v? v is 2x cubed plus 5x multiplied by dv dx, what's dv dx? dv dx is 6x. So, we can actually proceed to do the expansion and bring everything together. Don't forget, I already said it. If you have a question, just send them in. Now, I'm just revising. I'm just touching all these things. I've, we have our lecture on it already. Okay, so that's how to apply product rule. That's how to apply product rule. So the next thing I want to talk about too is quotient rule. Quotient rule. For quotient rule, that one deals with division. If you have y equals to u over v, then quotient rule says that y dx equals v du dx minus u dv dx. 
all over this square. That's what quotient true is about. So everything is just about identifying your u with the variator, v will be the denominator, then you compute all this. So v you have that already, u you have that, and you will be able to produce v squared. But the u dx and the v dx, they are the only thing you just do. And you start in this formula, then you get your answer. So that's uh, what majorly what differentiation is uh, about. There are still a lot of things that we can say about differentiation, but I will not go beyond this. Don't forget if you have a question. If you have a question that relates with anything in differentiation, I'm going to solve the question. Just send it to that course I've done now. Now, I think we could do a brief introduction to integration. A brief introduction to integration. Now, integration also has methods, but unlike differentiation, integration is very, very wide. You can't just you can't just engulf integration. You can't just engulf it all. You can't encap it all. Differentiation now. Once you know some rules and you apply them very well, with carefulness, you'll be able to do anything. But integration is not like that. Integration is very, very, very a little bit challenging. You need to be able to use a lot of things out. So I'll just introduce it to you now. If you have a function. We have a function f of x. So the integration of this function f of x with respect to x, you see the sign, the integral of f of x with respect to x. Let's say the function is ax raised to the power n, ax raised to the power n dx. And the rule says that you have ax raised to the power, just add 1 to the power and use the result to divide. Then you now add constant of integration. That's the rule of integration. So whenever you have this, you don't have to concern yourself about anything. Just go to the power of the variable. When you go to the power of the variable and add one to it, then the result that you get when you add one to the power, then you use it to divide the whole thing and you add constant. You can use any letter as your constant. Just say that that is what constant of integration. Now, this thing will this rule will hold for any polynomial expression that you have, except for when n is equal to minus 1. So n must not be equal to minus 1. So take note of that. n must not be equal to what? Minus 1. So let's, let's start off from integration. We have integration of 3x squared plus x uh, minus 1. Let's see how this goes with respect to x. Of course, it, since they are joined by addition, they can split the integration. It's a multiplication that you cannot just split like that. Integral of um, um, product is not equal to product of integral, and then for integral of sum equals to sum of integral, integral of difference equals to difference of integral. Same for differentiation too, but you can just do that for multiplication and division. So I'll just integrate this. This will be what 3x raised to the power 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 plus this x is raised to the power 1, so that's x raised to the power 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1, then minus. So here, yeah, whenever you see, you know, the other time you say, whenever you differentiate a constant, you have zero. But whenever you integrate a constant, you have you have the variable that you're integrating with respect to. So multiply by that constant. So if I multiply x, which is what we are integrating to by minus one now, I will have what? Minus x. Now we integrate. And don't forget to add your constant of integration. So by the time you settle this, this is three, we cancel three. So you have x raised to the power 3 plus x raised to the power 2 over 2 minus x plus c. So that, this is the value of that integral. That's, that's it. Now, another thing I saw, let me just introduce this next thing to you for integration and then we say uh, by for now. So there's something called integral by part. Integral by part. For instance, if you have integral of product, and you cannot solve by all the tactics that you have taken in, uh, like all the tactics that you know about the integration substitution method, trigonometric substitution, and all those things. Now, integral by part is a guy that you need to know. Now, integral by part says that we have integral of u dv 
equals u v minus integral of v d u. This is what integral by part is talking about. Say that you have a function f of x multiplied by g of x. So instead of you saying this is u and this is v, you just have to say one of them is u and one of them is what? Is the v. How do you get the v? How do you get u? The one has, that, that is u. You know, from this part now, we need u v and we need we have we have u already, but we don't have v. So we need to get our v and we need to get what? The u. So basically how we do that is we say f we differentiate f of x. So u equals f of x, and you agree that the u dx equals f prime of x. Then by the time you cross multiply here, you have du equals f prime of x dx. Do you see that? Du equals what? F prime of x dx. So we do that. I've already gotten my du now. That's one of the things I don't have. Now, v is another thing I don't have there. Let me see if I can get my d now. You know, dv equals g of x. According to here, I will have developed it. Now, to eradicate this d, this d is not just ordinary d, not letter d. This is a differential. This is differential. So you integrate both sides. You integrate both sides. So when you integrate the v, you have v. When you integrate the u, you have u. When you integrate the x, you have x. That's how it works. When you integrate the differential, you have like integrating one with respect to v. I know you just multiply v with one. So this will be what v equals the integral of g of x. And that's what that's what it will look like. So now we can produce our v from here. You notice that in this place now, it's only g of x that is not being multiplied with anything, so it's very easy for us to do. And this one will just be purely the differentiation, then we'll be able to do all we want to do. So, that's a little recap on differentiation and integration. I, I can't go deep into it unless you have questions that will make me talk about those areas. So, I was still expecting you to, sell, to send your questions. Uh, but for now, we have to say bye for this session. Thank you very much for joining us.